Yeah, fingers crossed. We're about 18 hours away, and NASA believes they are a go for launch. And I want to point out the rocket. I promise you, we're about 11 miles away from it, but that is the rocket there behind me uh, in the distance there. Uh, you know, this rocket suffered a series of weather and technical delays uh, on, on Monday. Uh, unfortunately, it caused NASA to scrub that mission, uh, carrying the uh, uh, SLS rocket, but also that Orion crew capsule up on top. Uh, but the rocket itself is a big, complex machine, and I want to show you how it compares to other spacecraft and other things like the Statue of Liberty. It is 322 feet tall, taller than the Statue of Liberty, way taller than the old space shuttle, uh, and it is the most powerful rocket ever built, and sometimes not everything works. And the big problem Monday was with one of the four main rocket engines that NASA said they couldn't cool it down enough to where uh, they could get a good launch. But what they're now saying is that they don't believe that there was a problem with the engine itself, but that they had a bad sensor that was feeding them inaccurate data. So NASA says they are confident they can now just ignore that sensor and fly anyway. So this is a test flight, right? And and so while I feel very good about our procedures, when you look the team in the eye, they're ready. Uh, we can't control the weather. Um, and so on, on any given day, you know, th there is risk that we'll be able to get off. I think uh, what I kind of am looking at is our team is ready. So you heard him mention the weather there. Right now they are saying that the weather is 60% favorable for launch. That goes up a little bit as uh, the afternoon goes on. But if for whatever reason they don't launch tomorrow at 2.17 p.m. Eastern time or in that two-hour window, uh, that they can try again on Monday. Chance? It's crazy how intricate all this is, Clayton. I mean, when your rocket's overheating, you can't take it to Jiffy loop. You know, you really got to figure out is this serious or not. So the first rocket is going up, which that, that visual is pretty cool. But no people are on board, right? Why no astronauts? That's right. Well, because uh, even though we've been to the moon, you mentioned we went to the moon uh, for the last time 50 years ago. We have done this before, but spaceflight is still risky. It is still dangerous. And that is the reason why they don't want to put people on board this flight. It's a brand new rocket, but also one of the primary mission goals, and I think we've got a picture of it here, is to test the heat shield. When that Orion capsule returns to Earth on October 11th, it will be traveling around 25,000 miles an hour, and it will heat up to temperatures as high as 5,000 degrees. And there is no way simply to test that on Earth. The only way to test that is to go fly. And you don't want to have people on board the first time you go fly it. Uh, but even though there won't be uh, human passengers on board, there are going to be some passengers. And we've got some pictures of the mannequins. There are three of them uh, that NASA is putting on board. They are, of course, calling them moonikins. Uh, they uh, basically have thousands of sensors. They can kind of replicate uh, the human body, and they are rigged to study things like radiation exposure and uh, vibrations. Uh, but eventually, there will be humans on board. Artemis II, uh, NASA says, may fly as early as 2024 uh, with people on board. That one will not land, but they will land, NASA hopes anyway, uh, in 2025 or sometime later this decade. And these are the faces of the men and women uh, that will be going. These are 18 NASA astronauts. This is Team Artemis. Uh, we don't know who is going yet. They haven't picked the astronauts for these missions, but NASA says they will be sending the first woman. And and the first person of color to the moon sometime this decade. Chance. You know what strikes me, Clayton? Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I always thought, oh, the astronauts are so old. Now they all look so young. <laughs> okay, so we have this brand new rocket. It's long overdue. It is expensive. How much does all this cost? Yeah, you know, this is something we don't talk about a lot because even though this is a brand new rocket, it's never flown before, it's actually built with old shuttle engines. Some of the engines on this rocket have actually been to space uh, several times. So it's old legacy technology that has been put into this new rocket. Now, according to the NASA Office of Inspector General, the Artemis 1 launch and the Artemis 2 and 3 launches will each cost $4.1 billion each. Uh, and if you tally up the cost of the program from 2012 when it started uh, going through 2025, they expect it to uh, add up to about 20, I'm sorry, $93 billion. And NASA's Inspector General, other space experts say that is simply not sustainable over the long term, especially when you have private space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin building and launching their own rockets and doing it for a whole lot cheaper. Chance.
got to go back to Congress every every year or two and say, you know, my hand is out again. Clayton Sandell in Florida live as the excitement for the space enthusiast is mounting. I know they're all around you tonight to the moon and beyond. Thank you, Clayton.